When a young child is sick with a fever, parents are naturally worried, and when their child's arms and legs begin to shake due to a febrile seizure, it can be downright terrifying. But febrile seizures are not epilepsy and are usually not harmful. Febrile seizures are uncontrollable body movements known as convulsions. Some children are more likely to have febrile seizures than others. They are usually triggered by fever. Febrile seizures are a common childhood disorder. They usually happen in children between 6 months and 5 years of age. They tend to run in families, children who have their first seizure when younger than age 1, have a 50% chance of having another febrile seizure. The chances of a child older than age 1, having a second febrile seizure are about 30%. Anytime your child has a seizure, he or she should be evaluated by a healthcare provider. While febrile seizures are mostly harmless, the combination of a fever and a seizure may be a sign of another condition that needs medical attention. Febrile seizures almost always happen to the entire body. The muscles become rigid. There is severe shaking of the child's body, arms, and legs. In this video, we have discussed the causes, signs and symptoms, complications and treatment options including drugs with dosages and do's and don'ts of febrile seizure, so let's get started. Febrile seizures are seizures caused by a sudden rise in body temperature, with fevers greater than 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, and no other underlying seizure-provoking causes or illnesses, such as central nervous system infections, electrolyte abnormalities, drug withdrawal, trauma, genetic predisposition, or known epilepsy. Febrile seizures are categorized as either simple or complex febrile seizures. Here are some of the key points to remember. There is no specific seizure-causing number on the thermometer scale. Because each child's threshold convulsive temperature differs, the highest fever required to trigger febrile seizures is specific to each child. Seizures caused by fever are thought to be caused more by viral infection than bacterial infection, with HHV-6 being the most common virus causing fever in the United States. While in Asian countries, the influenza A virus has been frequently associated with febrile seizures. The symptoms of a febrile seizure depend on which type of seizure it is. There are two main types of febrile seizures. First, simple febrile seizure. A simple febrile seizure is the most common type of febrile seizure, accounting for about 8 out of 10 cases. Generally, is a tonic-clonic seizure, lasts less than 15 minutes, doesn't reoccur within 24 hours or the period in which your child has an illness. Next, complex febrile seizure. Complex febrile seizures are less common, accounting for 2 out of 10 cases. A complex febrile seizure is any seizure that has one or more of the following features. The seizure lasts longer than 15 minutes. If your child only has symptoms in one part of their body, this is known as a partial or focal seizure. If your child has another seizure within 24 hours of the first seizure, or during the same period of illness, and your child doesn't fully recover from the seizure within one hour. No specific studies are indicated for a simple febrile seizure. Physicians should concentrate on determining the cause of fever. The type of the underlying febrile illness may indicate the need for additional laboratory tests. A child suffering from severe diarrhea, for example, may benefit from electrolyte testing. It is recommended to check for the following blood test for a child having a febrile seizure for the first time. Serum electrolytes, calcium levels, hemoglobin and WBC counts to rule out anemia and infectious pathology, and viral markers if required. Other tests include lumbar puncture to rule out meningitis. Consider lumbar puncture in children less than 12 months, as signs and symptoms of bacterial meningitis may be mild or absent at this age. Because clinical signs and symptoms of bacterial meningitis might be subtle in children aged 12 to 18 months, lumbar puncture should be considered. The decision to do a lumbar puncture in children older than 18 months is based on clinical suspicion of meningitis. Based on a risk-benefit analysis, long-term or intermittent anticonvulsant therapy is not recommended for children who have had one or more uncomplicated febrile seizures. The common rule of thumb is to brought down the fever as early as possible, you can use acetaminophen suppository. In active stage of convulsion, diazepam suppository can be used. 
Some of the most used drugs in febrile seizures include diazepam. Oral diazepam can decrease the number of subsequent febrile seizures when given with each febrile episode. Many practitioners will prescribe rectal diazepam, particularly to patients who have had prolonged febrile seizures, in order to prevent future episodes of febrile status epilepticus. By increasing the activity of GABA, a major inhibitory neurotransmitter, diazepam depresses all levels of CNS, including limbic and reticular formation. A study reported in the New England Journal of Medicine gave oral diazepam 0.33 mg per kilogram per dose every 8 hours throughout the febrile illness until the child was afebrile for 24 hours. However, this dosage was frequently associated with side effects such as imbalance, lethargy, and irritability. Next, clobazam. Oral administration of clobazam can also help with recurrence of seizure. The dosage should be 5 mg for children weighing less than 30 kg twice a day and 10 mg for child weighing more than 30 kg. Remember, most children outgrow febrile seizures by age 5. Few children have more than 3 febrile seizures in their lifetime. The number of febrile seizures is not related to future risk for epilepsy. Children who would develop epilepsy anyway will sometimes have their first seizures during fevers. Purple Day is an international grassroots effort dedicated to increasing awareness about epilepsy worldwide. On March 26 annually, people in countries around the world are invited to wear purple and host events in support of epilepsy awareness. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support us to learn more. Thank you.